past nine. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Back for um, 2011, our first chat uh, for this year. It's um, Jules Clancy from the um, the Stone Soup with um, Minimalist Home Cooking. Hello to you, Jules. Hi, Glenn. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Did you have a um, a great holiday over in Ireland for Christmas, New Year's? Yes, I had a fabulous time. We actually had I had my first white Christmas ever. It was like minus ten, and oh. all the trees had icicles on them. It was so beautiful. It was really good fun. So a bit of a bit of a change to um, come back to um, some warmer temperatures. Um, in, in yeah, Australia. yeah. Although it's been quite cool here, we've had a lot of rain. So yeah, um, oh, yeah it hasn't, oh. been, it hasn't been too much of a culture shock. <laughs> we know that you've had a lot of rain, Jules. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, what was your culinary highlight over the holiday period? Um, I'd have to say the ham. So um, my boyfriend's family li- live in Limerick, which is um, kind of south of Galway on the west coast, and they're famous for their ham. So, um, yeah, we went to the butcher and got this ham. And they, over there they don't um, – the, the hams aren't – they're all raw, like they're not cooked, so it's smoked and, and salted and everything, but you have to actually cook it um, yeah. yourself before you glaze it. So um, that was a bit of an experience. We had like a seven-kilo ham, <laughs> but it was, it was the best ham I've ever ever eaten it was just so so good it was really um so you managed yeah. to get that balance of getting the center cooked but also the outside not too crispy yeah so you actually um you meant to boil them like simmer them on the stove um but we didn't have a, a kind of pot big enough to fit the ham in so i got this massive like oven bag and filled it up with water and rigged something up and did it in the oven instead so and just like slow heat and you know kind of it worked really well and was there anything you hadn't encountered before um, or was it all pretty uh, traditional fear? Um, it was pretty traditional fear, but the Irish, of course, have two types of potatoes for Christmas, so they have mash as well as roast potatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> potatoes for breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Well, we something... Some... Yep. Well, we had some great black pudding as well. Oh, so. yeah. 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 Um, that, that's, um, that's definitely a favourite of mine. Don't have it very often... But um, but it's yeah. uh, I love it. I love it when you can, can can find some really good stuff from the butcher. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good for you all that iron and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I can imagine one thing that they aren't ha- eating in Ireland right now because there's so much of it outside. Um, well, kind of outside is like ice cream, and that's what we're going to be looking at uh, now, which is perfect for this um, time of the year in this part of the world. You've got a um a recipe without a machine. Yeah. So um. Actually, I'm just about to throw it out, but I um, ice cream is like my my vice. Like I absolutely love it. Um, it's kind of like my weakness, blood and chocolate. Um, so years ago, I splashed out and bought like a fancy ice cream machine that has like it does it all. Can you just put everything in and it, off it goes? Yeah. Um, but it's really noisy and it's really big and it's kind of takes up a lot of room in my kitchen. And I've kind of want, been wanting to get rid of it for ages. So I've been on the kind of hunt for a recipe that doesn't need an ice cream machine but still gives you that lovely kind of creamy, light, airy texture that you get in, in really good ice cream. Um, and I finally cracked it, Glenn. It's only taken me a couple of years. You've but... got it. Great. The I've secret. It, yeah. yeah. So I posted about this this in December. Um, and it's actually, it's so simple. It's kind of, I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner. So kind of the first secret is, um, so when you're using an ice cream machine, um, the secret to creamy ice cream is um, to have like the smallest ice crystals as possible. Yeah. Um, and... The way they do that in commercial and in an ice cream machine is that you have a paddle that's churning all the time. So when, as it's free, as the mixture is freezing, any ice crystals that they form, they get broken up and they keep really small, and you get that lovely creamy texture. Yeah. So I was looking for another way to kind of get get that, and um, the other way to do that is to um, so when you have a, like the more the more concentrated a solution is, so the more sugar you have in something, um, the more difficult it is for it to freeze. It kind of lowers the freezing point, and it also means that it's difficult for the ice crystals to form. So, oh. presto, add lots of sugar, and you're sorted. <laughs> so, um, um, so sugar is the secret. Oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, and how a lot of sugar are we talking about here? Yeah, lo- yeah, lots of icing sugar actually. So it's really fine, fine, finely powdered in the beginning, and it, it dissolves. Um, it dissolves into the mixture really quickly. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's 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 start let's start from scratch for this um for this recipe. Okay. So we um this one's a, a lemon ice cream, which is um kind of helps because the lemon the acid in the lemon balances out all that sugar, so that the flavour is still it's not too too cloying or anything. It's quite fr- refreshing in your mouth. Um, so we start out. We've got like a third of a cup of lemon juice, and you just get um two hundred and fifty grams of 
icing sugar and, and just mix the lemon juice into and the icing sugar together and they kind of that dissolves and then you get um 300 mils of just a tub of um whip, whipping cream and you just whip that up um with a whisk or however you normally whip your cream and then you just combine the combine the two pop it in the freezer um and freeze it for it usually takes about six hours i used to tend to just do it the night before i, I want to use it yeah. and um the next day like amazing creamy ice cream and it'll be you know, soft and creamy straight from the freeze, like you won't have to soften it in the fridge. You know how sometimes like you buy ice cream and it's really hard and you have to let it sit out for a while? This yeah. is like lovely from, from the beginning, yeah. It's, it's, it's so good. It's so <laughs> much more simple than what I would have imagined it would be. Yeah, so like a traditional ice cream um, like would be, it's custard-based, so you normally, um, you, know, you get some sugar and eggs and then you mix that in with your cream and you cook it over a low heat. You have to be careful you don't get it too hot because otherwise... Um, the eggs will curdle and stuff, and it's it's really complicated. Yeah, so it gives you like brilliant results. You don't have to worry about having you know eggs in in it. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's really the business. Yeah, well, that's um really really great. The uh, recipe is up at um thestonesoup dot com. Perfect for a um for a hot summer's day. Um, some homemade ice cream. I reckon I'm gonna give this one a go. Thanks, yeah, do. yeah thanks, Jules, and um, we'll see you same time next week. Sounds good, Glenn. See ya. See ya. Jules Clancy. And as I say, that um, website once again, thestonesoup.com.